Surprise! What is this? What is this? Right about now you might be saying, who is this? <laughs> well, it's Leib Shmuel here, coming to you from FEMA region number three, with what is this? What is this? Can't say it just once. Hmm. Now it's been a while. Haven't appeared in the, in the camera, you know, in the video since the uh, end of June. Had a rough July, rough month, July. Yeah. I did put up a video, you know, calling for, asking for your prayers. I want to thank you all so much. I feel them, I know them. Elohim, he lets me know that you care. And I thank you all who have prayed. That last video, the one I made in June... There wasn't a lot of yucking it up in that one. That was a bit serious. And since I I, uh, I made that video, uh, right after that, uh, kind of a heaviness settled down on old Laden here. FEMA Region 3. It's the birth pangs. We feel them in our own bodies. We feel them. But it's, you know, it's, it's also the fact that, uh, that there's so much lying, so much deception, even amongst the brethren, people saying that the rapture of the church is a lie, saying that uh, those who are looking for that blessed hope, we have a cowards. We want to run and hide. We don't want to fight for the Lord. Go back and watch that video. You know, it's uh, if you like it. Uh, <laughs> like I said, there wasn't much uh, much yucking it up in that one. Um, What's happening in the world right now since I uh, talked to you last like this, you know. And if I glance up, I, I got the idiot box uh, over here. I'm watching the ticker because, you know, <laughs> you know, breaking news every 80, 80 third of a second now, you know. But there's turmoil on every continent. Turmoil on every continent. The Olivet Discourse <laughs> is happening right now, right now, right here, right today, August the 18th, 2014, <laughs> days of Noah, days of Lot. Take a look at the... Uh, some of these pictures are going to pop up. Just take a look at them. I wonder what, where's, oh man, look at that. Which at uh, Afghanistan, which at the uh, old pictures from Iraq. Now, it's Missouri. Missouri. The United States of the Americas, Ferguson, Missouri. They got the National Guard. We can't put the National Guard on the border, but we can put them in Missouri. <laughs> President, what's his name? Can't say, I just, you know, I don't want to say his name. I just, you know who I'm talking about. You got people out there in this country saying, boy, man, I wish we had Putin. He does whatever he wants. Well, so does what's-his-name. But uh, Putin, isn't it sad when you got to say you think Putin's got more sense? Oh, God, oh. 
But those th these pictures here, they're, they're just disturbing. Africa is a mess with the Ebola. And it's not going to be in, you know, that they're totally convinced that will, that it's completely out of control. Ukraine, well, there's that. Nothing's going to change in Israel, you know, with Hamas and all that. That's just going to continue. I believe Psalm 83 is fulfilled, is fulfilled. Now, Mr. Silas and a lot of folks, you know, they, they feel that there has to be an all-out war. You know, like, of all, you know, everyone, all at once, you know, are surrounding Israel. I, I don't think that's necessarily has to be. Because Asaph, uh, some say Asaph, some say Asaph, that wrote Psalm 83, he was saying how, you know, that the enemies of Elohim conspire together to destroy Israel. That's what they're doing. They've been doing that. Psalm 83 is in the process, has been in the process of fulfillment for years. But the birth pangs, that, that's what's, they are what is increasing in intensity. And in that, you know, closeness. Absolutely say it again. Polly put the kettle on. But, uh, yeah, every continent, there's there's turmoil. Wars, rumors of wars, that's, that's a given right now. That's, you know, you don't even have to. The earthquakes all over the place. Waves in the seas roaring. With just, you know, with Hawaii, with, you know, three hurricanes all coming all at the same time. Had to keep Pastor Farag in prayer without ceasing during that period of time. Speaking of that man, Pastor J.D. Farag, from Calvary Chapel, Kaneohe, in Hawaii. He spoke to my heaviness. He speaks to all of our heaviness. For those of you who, who watch his prophecy updates and listen to his great sermons, he's in the book of Samuel right now, 1 Samuel. <laughs> Excellent. Expository teaching from Pastor Farag. I want to play something for you in, in a second from one of his uh, prophecy updates. And when I heard what he said, it was like, yes. Yes. He is speaking for many of us. He feels it so intensely. He's feeling these birth pains. He's so passionate about Yeshua coming for us. But he's been having that heaviness as well. Watch and listen to Pastor Farag. If I could be so candid, one of the reasons I'm taking this different approach today is maybe selfish in, in some ways, but I'm going insane. Wow, Pastor, we need to pray for you. It, just hear me out. <laughs> I mean, I'm, just, I'm going out of my mind. I, I, I just about can't handle it anymore. And I, and I want us to kind of get back to the truth amidst so many lies in order to get reacquainted with the semblance of sanity. And if you're anything like me, and I suspect you are, it is becoming increasingly difficult to remain calm and sane in the midst of what I'm going to call such satanic insanity 
This is satanic insanity. That's a strong word and uh, phrase I realize, but I'm hoping you'll hear me out. I want to explain myself here. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that man speaking from his heart? I'm going insane. How many pastors in their pulpits are speaking this, the truth? How many pastors are talking about Bible prophecy, the urgency of these birth pains that are hitting now in such intensity? I had such encouragement to my heart when I heard this man speak that way because that's what I'm feeling. That for a whole month I, I didn't know what to say. Because I, I, I make a video, you know, the, at that point I just could find nothing, couldn't even find humor in anything. Not that there's always humor in, in the things that are happening around the world, but, you know, that's, that's what I do. I see the, the humor in things. Not, not to, to make fun of them or to mock them, but you, it just comes out. That's how he made me. And there's just no one expressing from the pulpit these feelings the way Pastor Farag is. There's so many of us out there that need to hear that, that need to hear someone say, this is nuts, and it's hard to take because, you know, you see things being fulfilled one of the things I was struggling with so much, and I put it in that video where I asked for a prayer, was the waiting, the waiting. <laughs> How long, O oh Lord? How long, my adorn, until you come for us? Are the pastors, why, what are the pastors doing? These pastors, from the pulpits, <laughs> just, just, you know, just given, yeah, I'm not judging no one's, you know, way to, 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 to do their sermons or whatever, but this is that these are the last days, people. These are the end times. Every, every building that has, it welcomes into it those who proclaim Yeshua HaMashiach as their savior. The church. Every one of these places should be shouting it from, from the steeple top. That Yeshua is returning. That these are the last days. But so many of them don't even believe it. They don't want them. They didn't even want them to come. They want their, their picnics and their bowling nights and their, you know, investing in their stocks. <sighs> I had someone tell me. I don't want him to come back yet. I want my stocks to go up. Are you idiots? Hmm. <laughs> and then I, people that I know, people that I that I, I thought, you know, was looking for a blessed hope. I have them fulfilling. Uh, what is your uh, Second Peter? Uh, Second Peter three three, I believe it is. Let's see, glasses here. Let me look in the scriptures here. Yeah, they, they're, they're fulfilling Second Peter. Chapter 3, verse 3. Scoffers will come in the last days and they will say, uh, they've been saying he's, he's going to come back forever. Oh, uh, since the old times they've been saying that. I got people that I, that I thought loved Elohim saying this to me. People that are come, uh, 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 saying that they're that Yeshua is their saviors, saviors saying, ah, 
we just get on. Let's just get on with things. He'll be back. Yeah, maybe, yeah, he'll be back one of these days. You ain't got to worry about that. Smack VAP. Oh, and he will. <laughs> and he will. Wake up. Wake up before you get the smack. Right? Because it's coming. It's coming. But the pastors better wake up. And they better start talking about the Lord coming back. They're not doing it. Boy, I'm really starting this one out with a lot of yucks too. <laughs> now just give me a minute. And he was talking, you know, the lies, you know, are the are the are the pastors in the pulpits, you know, getting up and saying, talking about the deception. Talking about the lies, trying to find out why so many people that proclaim Yeshua as their Savior, why you know, why they're preparing for the Antichrist instead of for Him. Goodness sake! Gotta prepare. Gotta prepare. Well, what did they, what did Elohim? What did he do with Gideon? Now think about this. You know. You know, you ask the prepper people, the, you know, and the... <laughs> you know, what's better? Is it better to have, you know, a couple thousand uh, bottles of water on hand or just 300? Which would you rather have? A couple thousand or 300? Well, you know, everybody wants more. Well, Elohim dealt with dealt with the Midianites with through Gideon with three hundred men, three hundred. He had thousands. He started out with thousands. What did Elohim say? No, no, no. That's too many. You trust in me. <laughs> you trust in. He's saying, Gideon, you trust in me. You don't trust in your men. You don't trust in you know your 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 weapons and your this, your that, your armor. Your... Elohim is your armor. I hope that's a good analogy. I don't know. That's all I could think about. You know, going out and buying this and buying that and getting more and more and you got to protect yourself and prepare. Samson killed, what, a thousand? Uh, or how many ever it was? I got to look it up. Um, I'll, I'll stick it up here somewhere. Um, how many Philistines with a jawbone of a donkey? Man, oh man, rip the lion apart. Yeah, he had all kinds. Bare hands, you know, and a bone. Bare hands and a bone. The story of Samson. <laughs> there you go. Bare hands and a bone. I like that. That's good. Thank you, Elohim. That's nice. He always gives me material. It all comes from him. You know, everything I do, everything I say, it all comes from him. And that's like what Rush Limbaugh says, you know, talent on loan from Elohim. Although Rush don't use the Hebrew. But God bless <laughs> <laughs> Elohim bless, I give all. Elohim bless Rush, uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh, you know, bless him. And Hester Farag, I give all. Elohim, Elohim bless Pastor Farag. <laughs> he's speaking to us, he's, he's, he's saying the truth, he's, he's, he's giving his heart out to us. Of course, we do not trust in him, but in you, Elohim. But he has been very, he has been a blessing to so many of us. And we just thank you so much, too, for, for protecting the islands of Hawaii from those hurricanes that, that could have been devastating there. Little tiny place out in the middle of that ocean. And <laughs> that whole ocean, those hurricanes could have, could have been barreling through. And they picked that one little spot where those little, little islands were. 
but you knocked them off course to show for your glory for your glory amen amen but you know that's the sh had to show you that because that's where I was just wondering what's going on it's crazy crazy world and all the evil and the the lies and then going on the web and there's these people who are proclaiming Yeshua as their savior telling telling folks that the rapture is a lie and then <laughs> they fulfill prophecy all right they they fulfilling they're fulfilling prophecy I got a scripture I want to show you and talk about it because you got these people out there that are just trying to get hits on their websites on their on their channels trying to play both sides putting down doctrines of, of other folks and then spewing out the same garbage but just in a different way. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeshua knew what he was talking about. Yeshua knew what he was talking about. That's the understatement of all time. And he said, do not be deceived. In all of his prophetic discourses, that's that's what he started out with. Do not be deceived. And many people are. You go on some of these channels and you see the comments. They're talking about lies. They're telling you to, to go outside of the scriptures. Ugh. Well, I guess it's about time we go into the scriptures. So, yeah. Here it is. Here we go. Here they come, here come the scriptures. All right, now let's take a look at what I believe is a, a prophecy that has been fulfilled. It was, uh, it's in the scriptures, of course, where our prophecy is found. Let's take a look at this passage right here. Second Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. And this, of course, is the new King Jim. There's a, there's a prophecy right there. But a time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine. <laughs> Go on the web. There's people out there. There's, their ears are itching. And the, the naughty, crazy teachers are just coming out of the woodwork. The occult. That is what you are promoting. You and your students with their itching ears. I give old. Don't get me started. Not too late. The time has come. The time is here. This is fulfilled. Right here. The ears are itching. The teachers are teaching this idiotic garbage. These Gnostic secret books they're saying. They, for one thing, you know who you are. Now come on. They're saying that the Catholic Church and the Pope, the beard Pope Jorge the False Prophet, he's teaching that you cannot have a relationship with Elohim unless you are a member of the Roman Catholic Church. It's dangerous to, to approach Elohim if you are not a member of the Roman Catholic Church. They're saying that that's evil. Oh, they're, how they how they can dare say such a thing. And then in the next breath, they say you got to read these secret books in order to get close to Elohim. They are deceiving you by saying such a thing. They're just as deceptive as Jorge the false prophet and his Roman church. Telling you that you got to be an initiate. You have to, to get into the Gnostic. Oh, mm. Oh, yeah, good vault, don't get... Mm. 
and they want to use the, the word Gnostic and Gospel in the same breath. That's, that's, that's blasphemous to say that, to use those two words together. The Gnostic garbage. Here's, well, take a look at this. This is one of them books. It's called The Lost Books of the Bible. They're lost, all right. Should have stayed lost. I mean, they're lost. Anyone who gets into this is lost spiritually because, you, ugh. All right, look here. Here's another one. Here's another one that's related. Lost Books of the Bible for Dummies. You see, there's a typo in that cover because what it should say is Lost Books of the Bible are for dummies. Now, one of the uh, the writings uh, in this collection is called the Infancy Gospel of Thomas. Should be called the Infantile Gospel of Thomas. Hey. And here's, I got some information from good old Wikipedia, Wikipedia, and, uh, and in, in the Wikipedia it said, The Infancy Gospel of Thomas is a pseudo-epigraphical, which means falsely attributed, right there, you know, there's, it's not, it's not even by the Thomas, they didn't know who this Thomas was. <laughs> hey, good old, all right. The Infancy Gospel of Thomas, Thomas Edison maybe, right, is a pseudo-epigraphical or falsely attributed gospel about the childhood of Jesus that is believed to date to the second century. It was part of a, and get this, popular genre, that's my emphasis, emphasis of Laban, popular genre of work written to satisfy a hunger for more miraculous and anecdotal stories of the childhood of Jesus than the Gospel of Luke provided. You see, they're adding... Oh, my goodness. Look, I, 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 I italicized uh, those, those two uh, phrases there. Popular genre to satisfy a hunger. Now, if that's not the teachers, you know, the people heaping under themselves, teachers, you know, with their itching ears, they want to they wanna hear what they want to... Hear the, the the fables and the anecdotes and the the stupid idiot stories. Now, am I just saying that? Is that my opinion that these stories are stupid and idiotic? Well, let's take a look at the at what this uh, infancy gospel of Thomas uh, uh, has to say. Uh, the text describes the life of the child Jesus with fanciful <laughs> and sometimes malevolent supernatural events comparable to the trickster nature of the god child in many a greek myth All right there one of the episodes involves jesus making clay birds which he then proceeds to bring to life an act also attributed to jesus in the quran oh well right there as long as it says it in the quran i give all Hey, going on. In another episode, a child disperses Vura. What's with this Vura? Ah, oh, sorry, I couldn't resist. A child disperses Vura that Jesus has collected. Jesus then curses him, which causes the child's body to wither into a corpse. Another child dies when Jesus curses him, when he apparently accidentally bumps into Jesus throws a stone at Jesus, or punches Jesus, <laughs> depending on the translation. Translation. Oh, that's rich. Maybe there's a, a translation that says, you know, the little child, he stepped on Jesus' toe, so Jesus turned himself into a Tyrannosaurus Rex and he ate Nazareth. Might as well. Might as well. You got Jesus striking kids dead? I oh my oh, good all right, going on. Take a look. Oh, I, I love this part. When Joseph and Mary's neighbors complain, they are miraculously struck blind by Jesus. Are oh, you can you you get that? You get that? You know it's like Joseph, Mary, uh, your son he he, uh, he struck us blind. You, know, you think maybe oh <laughs> smack vap or oh, all right, I'm going to continue now. I'm calming now. 
Jesus then starts receiving lessons, but arrogantly, oh, that arrogant little Jesus, tries to teach the teacher instead, upsetting the teacher who suspects supernatural origins. Jesus is amused by this suspicion, which he confirms and revokes all his earlier apparent cruelty. Oh, all those cruel things that Jesus did as a child, he took it all back. Subsequently, he resurrects a friend who is killed when he falls off the roof and heals another who chops his foot up with an axe. Not only do they have Jesus, you know, walking around like Chucky, the little Chucky from the horror movies, you know, the, the guy falls off the roof, he chops his foot up. They got Nazareth filled with a bunch of idiot klutzes. This is pathetic, my friends. Anyone, and I mean anyone, who buys in to these teachings and listens to anyone that's promoting these Gnostic, this Gnostic garbage, man, it is an absolute fruitcake. You know, that's that. You buy into this stuff, and you ain't seen nothing. You ain't seen nothing. Now you 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 seen how you you know Jesus you know in in this in this whatever this is he made the clay birds come to life and he healed a man that chopped his foot off with an axe and he he wasn't cruel anymore and he took back all the bad things that he did. But my friends. If you read on, you come to the miracle of miracles. <laughs> the thing that Jesus did that just was, Oi, gewalt, oi, how wonderful, how great, according to the infancy gospel of Thomas. Yeshua, as a child, brings life to a dried fish. <laughs> Alright, that's it. I can't take it anymore. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. I go vault. He brought life to a dried fish. You can read it right in this piece of crap right here. I bought this thing years ago. <laughs> you know what I did with it? Oh, <laughs> Fritzy, wear a helmet. Shirley, Shirley, you know what I need. Look at what I got. Look at what I got. I got a artist. All right, good. Mm, give me a minute. Been a while. I had him for about a couple of days. Mm, I don't know. Seems like forever. Mm, all right. Ah, oh, thank you, Elohim. And Shirley. <laughs> one more, one more. I chew it fast. But you know, I want to go back to some of these pastors in the pulpits that don't care much about the, the last days, you know. How can they not see it? How can they not look in the headlines and see what's going on around the world and then match it up with Yeshua's Olivet Discourse and also in Luke, you know, Luke and Mark also with Luke 17, Mark 13 I believe I'll put it up there how can they not see it? you know you got you got some pastors don't even think there's going to be a tribulation. Are they out of their minds? Are they crazy? <laughs> they think it's all been, all, everything's been fulfilled. The, 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 you know, throwing their lot in with Augustine and, you know, when they started to say that the book of Revelation was nothing but allegory. Oh, man, they're going to pay for that. I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry. But they, you know, they're going to have to answer for motorcycle people. Motorcycle, motorcycle out mm. there, motorcycle. It's still some, I guess, people still riding around. But um, I, I don't get it. It's so obvious where we are today. You know? 
I'd say, you know, they say to me, you know, I don't think there's going to, you know, we, I mean, it's always been like this. There's always been these things happening. Well, you know, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. You know, I think, has anyone, have you ever really begged to differ? Think about that, you know, like, oh, may I differ? Please let me differ. I'm begging to differ. And, it, no, and it, who begs really to differ? I don't know. Just came to me, you know. Oh, oh, no. I ain't gonna. No need to beg. Just differ. Um. And you know, too. You know, I was saying. You know, there are brethren who who mock. You know, the rapture, the return of the Lord, and and the la the idea that we're in the last days. They mock that. And then I thought, are they brethren then? If they are mocking the uh, the 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 actual words of Yeshua himself who said there will be an end, there is the last days, there is a time when all this will happen. If they mock that and he says, I'm coming, I go to prepare a place for you and I will come back and take you there. I mean, he told, he told us that. If it wasn't true, he would have told us. That's what he said. If it's not true, I'll tell you. <laughs> You know, they're calling him a liar and they're saying, ah, last days. No, 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 it's always been. Don't even, you know, there's not going to be an Antichrist. No, no, no. Now, that was Nero or, you know, you know, Hitler and all that. I, that's all done. <laughs> and then, and then you have the ones, you know, who just believe that they just got to keep looking and, and see who the Antichrist is. Watching for the Antichrist, not watching for our, our Savior to come. He said, look up for your redemption draws nigh. Not look up, you know, here comes the Antichrist. No. I'm looking for the bridegroom. I'm not looking for that idiot. And I have no stake in him. I don't care about him. Why should we care about who the Antichrist is? We'll be out of here. Smack that. <laughs> <sighs> Yes, we do, of course, we have to obey our Elohim and, and our Adon. And he says to watch, watch for watch the signs, watch the signs. Now, we're all going to be curious about who Antichrist will be. Of course, you know, and there's plenty of ones out there that, that, that could fit the bill. You got Putin and, and you got, well, there's, there's many. Um... And I, uh, I want to show you this 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 one that uh, they've been talking about a lot lately. Um, one that is, is is a candidate in the news a lot, and uh, so I take a gander at this at this clown. All right, now folks, take a look at this. Take a look at this clown. Um, nice beard, you know. I've always been you know partial to beards, but you know this clown. I don't know. Baghdadi, Abu Bakir al-Baghdadi, Baghdadi, isn't there something, Elohim, what a sense of humor, you know, I mean, he names the guy Baghdadi, <laughs> you know, it sounds like, you know, if Tennessee Williams was a, uh, was a Muslim, he could have wrote uh, the character Baghdadi from uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Mosque, for all you literary buffs out there, um, but you know, I was, I wanted to, I bring him up, don't know if this man is going to be the Mahdi, the, I don't know if he's the Caliph, the, this ISIS group, crazy nuts, the ISIL, ISIS, you know, ISICL, whatever. They're, you know, proclaiming him something, my girl. He's proclaiming himself something. You know, pride, pride, come before that destruction. Oh, I can't wait. Right, Fritzy? Ow. That's it, baby. All right. Here he is, Baghdadi. And uh, I was watching one night that uh, Al Jazeera, Al Camino, whatever it was called, uh, Al Gore's old uh, TV station. And um, there was all these Muslims, you know, they had the street, you know. It looked like they ain't had a bath for, you know, six months, six years for that matter. And they're out in the street and they're like, you know... Uh, um, boy, I'm gonna have a fatwa on me, boy. Well, anyway, um, they're out there chanting, you know, that chanting, you know, Imam Makti, Imam Makti, something like that. 
and you're not even to sleep not long. Not long after, <clears throat> pardon me, I had phlegm. I went to sleep not long after watching that, and I had a dream. It was the same kind of thing, you know, they were all the Muslims was out on the street, they was out on the street, and they was chanting, they was chanting, Imam Mahdi, and then all of a sudden, they, they, the Mahdi dropped away, and they were just saying, Imam, Imam, Imam Zmebli, Imam's Mabley, and all of a sudden, there she was, standing up there in his place. Now, I, I woke up, I woke up in a, in a sweat. Oh, my goodness, Mom's Mabley. Oh, God forbid. But anyway, you know, I, just a strange dream. I just thought maybe you'd get a kick out of hearing it. Uh, don't if, no, I don't, I don't think it's going to mean nothing. I, I'm sure, I'm sure old Mom's ain't the Mahdi. <laughs> Mom's Mahdi. But, um... Now, like, I, I don't want to offend any of Mom's fans. She, from what I gather, she's a wonderful woman, you know, she, and she's no longer with us. Uh, that hat might be around somewhere. But, um, but no, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that uh, Mom's Mabley is the Mahdi. Let me point that out right now. Mom's Mabley is not the Mahdi. One more time, let me say it. Mom's Mabley is not the Mahdi. We have nothing to fear from uh, moms. But, you know, and I was thinking too, you know, and there's some folks that think that the Mahdi could also be Antichrist. You know, they could be one. Who knows? I'm not sure. There's a lot of candidates out there, whether it's a Muslim, whether it's some uh, European, whether it's President what's his name you know, is he still on vacation? I don't know. I don't care. But um, there's candidates out there. But I got to tell you one thing. Two things. Tell you about two things right here. Number one, the Mahdi or the Antichrist is not Mom's Mabley. Mom's Mabley is neither the Mahdi nor the Antichrist. And I'll tell you someone else who I guarantee I stake my life is not the Mahdi or the Antichrist. And that is Bert Convy. One, two, three, four. Oh, Bert Convy is not the Mahdi and not the Antichrist. No. And if Bert Convy had not dropped dead, I'll bet he would be nice. Do it, Richie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there that's looking for the Antichrist. You know it ain't Moms and you know it ain't Bert. You know it ain't Moms and you know it ain't Bert. I don't care who it is, the Antichrist can eat dirt. Now, why did I do this? Why did I, you know, what was that all about? You know, Bert kind of dancing around. Um, I can't believe I found that clip. Oh, man, Elohim. Um, I wasn't trying just to make fun of of the memory of moms or Bert Convy and nothing like that. I just want to show you it don't matter who the Antichrist is. We don't have to worry about that. Elohim is going to send his son for his bride. And that's who we are. We don't have to wait for, you know, the seals and the, and the trumpets and the vials. We just have to wait. For one trump, the trump of God. We hear that trumpet smack vap, the mother of all smack vaps. We're out of here, changed in a twinkling of an eye. And there we will be with him forever. In the place that he has prepared for us. If it wasn't so, he would have told us. Remember that. So we don't have to look for Antichrist, but we still look for signs. 
especially the signs in the Shamayim, the signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And this day is August the 18th. Right now, well, it was about 5.30 in the morning. It rose in the east here in the female region. I didn't get to see it, you know, but uh, close conjunction of Venus and Jupiter. And there's something coming up in about 10 days after that. So let's take a look at some signs in the Shamayim. <coughs> Pardon me, Flam. Here we are on Stellarium, the wonderful program you can download it from the web. The web, the world wide web. You download Stellarium. You can, you have a blast. You can watch the sun, moon, and stars in the Shamayim. Here we are, look back here. We're on the August the 10th, that was the day, the night, I should say, the supermoon. Three supermoons in a row, this summer, July, one in July. Uh, we had one on the 10th of this month, and then we have another one in September. Another supermoon. But here we are on the 10th, and here, today's the 18th, and of course, as I was saying, we have this wonderful conjunction of Venus and Jupiter, King planet and Venus were very integ integral in producing the star of Bethlehem, which showed the the Magi from from Persia, the the Talmudim of Daniel, the 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 Navi, the prophet. We don't like to say prophet Navi, Daniel, or Daniel the Navi. They were his students, the Magi, and they saw the star. Resting above where the child was. Yeshua was a child by then. It was a little while after, you know, he'd been born in the manger. But if we look here, we have Venus and we have Jupiter. And we're going to go up. Just watch closely. Watch how they move together. The 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. There they are right there. 15th of August. 16th, 17th, 18th. And that, of course, is today. This was 5.49 a.m. Eastern Standard Time we're here in the FEMA Region 3. They are a third or a less degree apart. And they'll be even closer next year. There's another conjunction in 2015 of Venus and Jupiter. There's another wonderful sign in the Shamayim. Very interesting. Not sure what it's going to entail. Don't know what you're going to entail today with this conjunction here of Venus and Jupiter. As I speak right now, the governor of Missouri uh, uh, was discussing the fact that he has, uh, you know, put the National Guard out in the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, awaiting a uh, press conference now, a second autopsy on the, that, that man that was killed there. The world's falling apart, my friends. The world's in turmoil. And we're going to move this back a little bit. Now watch what happens. We're going to go up to August the 20th. Look, oh, look at that beautiful little triangle there with the Jupiter, the Venus, and the Moon. Unfortunately, in, in uh, female region 3, unless you have, you know, an unobstructed horizon, you won't be able to see any of this. Uh, because it'll be in the early, early morning hours. This beautiful little triangle here, Venus, Jupiter, and the Moon. Now, this next thing that's going to happen is on the 28th. The 28th of this month, we're going to go 24, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th. We're going to move back and look at this alignment. Very, very interesting alignment. Go back a little further. Look at this. Look at this. Hold on. We got Jupiter here. Jupiter. Venus. The Sun. Before that, we got Regulus. Let me zoom in. Regulus, the King Star. The Sun, Mercury. The Moony Moony. There you go, Vaughn. Back. Come on now. 
spiker, the wheat in the hand of the woman, Virgo, which represents the Virgin and our Israel, and the planet Mars. And of course, look who, look who's on the outside, looking in, Saturn, that represents Satan. Always on the outside looking in. Look at there. Now, I'm going to turn it because it's very interesting. I'm going to turn it this way and now watch what it looks like in this way. Look at this here. I'm going to move in a little bit, a little bit more. We're going to go back. Now, look how it forms a sort of a bow. Look at that. From Jupiter all the way around to Mars with all the little old Saturn there. On the outside looking in. Look at that. It's like a bow. It's pretty amazing there, folks. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Jupiter, Venus, Regulus, the Sun, Mercury, the Moon, Spica, and Mars. You could even, you know, if you want, you could put in Terry's in there. which is a star in Scorpio, the bright star of the constellation of Scorpio, we turn on the uh, constellation lines, we see here that Saturn and Mars, the planets that represent war and Satan, are in the balances. In the scales, Mars and Saturn, right there in the constellation of Libra, during this strange, beautiful alignment of planets in the Shamayim. Let's turn off the constellations again here. Now, if you look, I'm going to go back a little bit now, I'm going to turn it. Back to here. We're going to go back over here to uh, around Venus and Jupiter. Going to go back to today, which is the 18th. Put Venus and Jupiter together again and zoom in. And we see that Venus and Jupiter, you can see that it's definitely those two because you see Venus and Jupiter. They are in the constellation of Cancer the Crab. See right here, Cancer the Crab, right smack dab, smack dab in the center. And you know, the constellation in Cancer also represents the the donkey, the foal of a colt that that Yeshua rode on in an event on Palm Sunday. And they rode to the eastern gate. And they laid the palm branches down. And they yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And the Pharisees said, knock it off. They don't want to hear that. Don't be saying that. And Yeshua says, if they didn't say it, the stones would cry out. They would say it. That's right. Now let me uh, correct myself for one second here, my friends. But I said before, when I was talking about Yeshua uh, riding into uh, the Eastern Gate on the day of his triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem, that uh, I said that they got for him the, uh, the foal of a colt, or a colt of a foal, or however, I'm not sure exactly how I said that, a second ago, but actually what it was, what it says in scripture, is that it was the foal uh, of a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey, and they laid their clothes on it, and, and he was placed on there, and he rode into the city triumphantly, but of course, according to in the book of Daniel, the prophet, we don't like the word prophet, and it's a pagan word, we say Navi, in the Hebrew, uh, Daniel the Navi, Said so of course he would he would ride in but be cut off, so he rode in not to become the Messiah right then and there you know, 
but he had to ride in, and then he would have to be cut off, which of course he was, as he was crucified for our sins, you know. And um, the interesting thing about the fact that Venus and Jupiter conjoin right there, smack, that, smack dab in the center of the constellation of Cancer, is because right there also, in that constellation, is a cluster of stars known as the Beehive Cluster, but it is also Presepi. It is called Presepi. And the very interesting thing is that Presepi... Now, let me go in here. Let me go to the search, and I'm going to put it here. Presepi, the Beehive Cluster. We're going to find it. We click on the little uh, magnifying glass here. And you see, here's where it shows, and we're going to zoom in, and we're going to see this cluster of stars here. Yeah, look at that. There's actually a thousand of them, I believe. Look at that. That is known as Presepi or the Beehive Cluster. Now, the word Presepi in Latin is manger. Manger. So remember before how we were saying, and there's Venus and Jupiter right here. Venus and Jupiter. Close, the closer in you get, the, the closer they are, they appear. And there is uh, Jupiter with its moons there. And they're conjoining at Presepi, which means the manger. So Venus and Jupiter, as we know, Integral in the uh, making of the Star of Bethlehem. And they can join at this time, on this day, August the 18th, in Cancer the Crab, which represents the donkey on which Yeshua rode in to Jerusalem. Also conjoining right there with Presepi, which means the manger. Hmm. Signs in the Shamayim, my friends. Signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. Oh, praise you, Elohim. Praise you, Elohim. Amen. Amen.